Welcome to part two of the derivative and the tangent line problem. If you haven't watched part one, please go back and watch it. It talks about how we define the slope of a tangent line. But in this video, we're going to tackle a really cool new problem. So here's the idea. Now what we want to do is find a general rule. Instead of finding the slope at a specific point, a comma f of a, consider leaving the formula generic, which would lead us to a formula that can be used to find the slope at any given point. All we have to do is leave x as x to stay generic instead of using a specific value a. We could then plug a, a specific value for a, at the end. We could plug in, okay? So the idea is, we're going to not plug in a specific number for the x, like 2 or 3 or negative 1. We're going to just leave it x. And we're going to generate a formula that can be used to find the slope of the tangent line at any point we want. So we're actually going to find the slopes after the fact, not while we're doing the work. Might take a little bit of time for you to understand this, but it's going to be pretty cool. Get ready. Now, huge warning here. These problems involve some very intense algebra. So please take your time, double check your work as you go. Students that get these problems wrong are students who don't like algebra, aren't very good at algebra, and don't check their work. So let's just dive right into it. All right, find a formula for the slope of the tangent line at any given value for x on the function. So instead of me giving you a specific value like three, we wanna kinda of just leave it open and generic. So again, we are still going to use our formula, our same formula for the slope of a tangent line. We're going to use the same formula. Here we go. All right. So we're going to find the slope of the tangent line. It's the limit as h approaches 0. But I don't have an a value, so I'm just going to leave everything as x. It's f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, here is something I want to keep mentioning. You know you're done. You know you're good to go for direct substitution. Direct substitution is going to be plugging zero in for h when you get this h to cancel. When that h in the denominator cancels, that's how you know you're good to go for direct substitution. All right, here I go. Step one. I'm going to take x plus h, and I'm going to plug it into my function. So I get x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 5. All right, now I'm going to plug x into my function. So I'm going to subtract. Now I'm going to plug x in. But wait a minute, x is already plugged in. So that's x squared minus 3x plus 5. Notice how, this is huge, warning, red flashing lights. Notice how I used parentheses there. Because this minus sign right here is going to need to be distributed through that function. Oh, divided by h. Okay, so again, what did I do? I simply found f of x plus h by plugging x plus h into the function for x, both of them. Then I found f of x, which I already knew what f of x was. It was just x squared minus 3x plus 5. All right, now I have a ton of algebra to do. All right, the limit as h approaches 0. Order of operations says square first, exponents first. That's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now, I could actually go ahead and distribute that negative 3 because there is no square there. I don't have to do any exponents there, so it's going to be a negative 3x and a negative 3h. Be very careful with all of this. Plus 5. Then, like I already mentioned, I do have to distribute that negative sign back to all of that because I'm subtracting the entire function. So that's a negative x squared, a positive 3x, and a negative 5. Oh, divided by h. All right, now let's keep going here. What is the limit as h approaches 0? All right, let's see what's going to happen here. Positive x squared, negative x squared. They're going to turn into a 0. Negative 3x, positive 3x. They're going to turn into a 0. Positive 5, negative 5. They're going to turn into a 0. And finally, after all the dust settles, the limit as h approaches 0. All that's left on top is a 2 x h plus h squared minus 3 h. Those are the terms that did not cancel all divided by h. Now again, you could try plugging 0 in for h. You can try direct substitution, but you're still going to get a 0 over 0. So I still have some more algebra ahead of me. Oh my gosh, I notice on top all three terms have an h in common, so I can factor out that h. 
I get 2x plus h minus 3, all divided by h. Now these h's will reduce. They're both factors. h divided by h is 1. So I get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h minus 3. And now I could use direct substitution, plugging in a 0 for the h. And that is how you evaluate a limit. Direct substitution is always an easy way to evaluate a limit. And when I do so, I get 2x plus 0 minus 3, which is 2x minus 3. There it is. There is a formula to find the slope of the tangent line at any given point. So again, how many points are on this original function? Infinite, millions. This will find me the slope at any one of them. So throw out an x, 7, plug it in. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 minus 3 is 11. Boom, at 7, the slope is 11. Easy, it even rhymes. What about negative 1? Well, negative 1 is a point on that function. Plug negative 1 in. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5. The slope at negative 1 is negative 5. That's how cool this is. So by keeping it generic, using x instead of a specific a, I end with a formula that has x. Hence, I could use it to find the slope of the tangent line at any given point I want. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's try another one here. All right, this is a good old square root one. Again, I want to find a formula for the slope at any given point on this function. Here we go. The slope of a tangent line at any given point on the function is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, keeping it generic, minus f of x oh, divided by h. All right, now I'm literally going to plug x plus h into this function. So I get the limit as h approaches 0, and I get 2 times x plus h plus 3 minus, now I'm going to plug x into the function, but wait a minute, I already know what f of x says. f of x is literally the function, so it's the square root of 2x plus 3. Again, it's, x is already plugged in for me. Now, you cannot distribute a minus sign through a square root, so please don't make that a negative 2x minus 3. It doesn't work like that. All divided by h. All right, now I'm stuck. I need this h and the denominator to cancel. I don't know what to do. We're going to do something that you probably saw me do in part 1 multiply by the conjugate. If uh, Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do first? Give me a minute. I am going to multiply by the conjugate, but let me clean this up a little bit. Again, using my algebra skills, inside that square root, we have a 2x, a 2h, plus 3. 2x plus 2h plus 3. It's actually worth doing that just to make it a little bit cleaner. I don't know. Maybe it's not cleaner, but whatever. I'm just doing a little bit of math there. Unfortunately, with those square roots, nothing else I could do. Now I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. And again, it's going to be long and ugly, but it's going to work out really nice in the end. Square root of 2x plus 2h plus 3 plus, that's the conjugate, the square root of 2x plus 3. But I can't multiply the denominator, or excuse me, I can't multiply the numerator unless I also multiply by the denominator. Square root of 2x plus 2h plus 3. Now, I want you to notice something. Is my handwriting messy? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie, it is. But I'm still showing all of my work. And I'm still being as neat as I possibly can, even though my handwriting's not beautiful. I tell kids all the time, I don't care about your handwriting being bad. I care about you showing all the work. All right, the limit as h approaches 0. All right, now this is the whole reason why we use the conjugate. Because when I multiply those first values, the square roots cancel, and I just get 2x plus 2h plus 3. When I multiply those back values, the square roots are going to get to cancel, and I get 2x plus 3. But be careful. It's a negative times a positive. So I am going to have to distribute that negative. Now that the square root disappeared, because I multiplied them together, now that just that negative will be distributed. So I'm going to do that in a minute. What about the outside and inside terms? Don't even waste your time writing them down. The whole reason why we multiplied by the conjugate was to get them to cancel. Now my denominator, just leave it alone. It's h times, again, this is really fun and, and boring to write, but it's the square root of 2x plus 2h plus 3 plus the square root of 2x plus 3. All right, on top, check this out. That's going to be a negative 2x and a negative 3. This positive 2x and that negative 2x are going to cancel. The positive 3 and that negative 3 are going to get a cancel. So the only thing left on top after all the dust settles is a 2h all over h times the square root of 2x plus 2h plus 3. Yes, I'm getting bored of writing it. I'm sure you are, but hey, we pretend you're like this super sophisticated math person. you got to write all of your steps. All right, now, oh my gosh, the moment I've been waiting for, these h's will reduce to a 1. They're both factors. h divided by h is 1. 
So now that I got that H to cancel, this is the greatest moment. Now we can use direct substitution, plugging in a zero only for the H. So on top, I have a two. Now, by the way, when you do direct substitution, this is where you no longer have to write the limit because you're now actually solving to get the answer to the limit. All right, let's see here. If I turn this H into a zero, two times zero is zero. So I get the square root of two X plus three plus another square root of two X plus three. Okay, sound good, not too bad. Now, make sure you take your time to see what happened there. The two times the H, which is zero, two times zero is zero, two X plus zero plus three is two X plus three. So I got square root of two X plus three, another square root of two X plus three. When you add square roots, the square roots do not cancel, but they are identical, so you are allowed to add them together. One apple plus one apple is two apples, so square root of two X plus three plus the square root of two X plus three is 2 times the square root of 2x plus 3. So I get 2. Whoop. Hold on a second. So my work is getting a little bit messy here. I realize that, and I apologize. But I'm going to move up here. I'm kind of running out of room at the bottom. I get 2 over 2 square root of 2x plus 3. And these 2s cancel. Again, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I get 1 over the square root of 2x plus 3 as my final formula. Oh, what does this formula do? All right, I got a function here. Got millions of points on this function. This will tell me the slope at any one of those points. X equals one, no big deal. Plug in one to my formula over here and I'll get the slope of the tangent line at one. What about 10, you may ask? Well, plug in 10 into my new function and I will get the slope of the tangent line at that point. Easy, easy, easy. Well, the work might not be easy, but I hope at the end of the day, you understand what it is we're finding. All right, one more example, and this is gonna be another one filled with great algebra. It is a rational function. But again, we wanna find a formula to give me the slope at any given point x. So I'm gonna keep things generic. The formula to find the slope of a tangent line at any given point x is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. All right, let's get this going. The limit as h approaches zero. Plug x plus h in. I got to plug it in for both x's. So I get two times x plus h all over x plus h minus five minus the actual original function. Again, plugging x in. But again, I already know what f of x is. I, I, it's already staring at me in the face. It's 2x over x minus 5. Oh, divided by h. Okay, now I got to try to do some algebra to make this thing look prettier. And boy, this might not be fun. Okay, first across the top, let's see here. I have a 2x plus 2h, just distributed that 2, all over x plus h minus 5. Boy, is that ugly. Minus 2x over x minus 5 all divided by h. Okay, well, what am I going to do here? Honestly, this is not really a trick here, but I'm going to subtract. I'm going to do what it says. I'm going to take these two fractions. I'm going to subtract them together. But to do that, I do need to get a common denominator. Now, what is the easiest way in the world to find a common denominator? You take the two denominators you have and you multiply them together. x plus h minus 5 times x minus 5. Now, I'm not actually going to multiply them together. I'm just going to like multiply them together as is x plus h minus 5, new set of parentheses, x minus 5. So I, I am multiplying together, but don't actually go ahead and do it yet. All right, now here's the trick. This denominator, in order to look like the common denominator, needs an x minus 5 on top and bottom, so I have to multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 5. That'll get me my common denominator. Okay, I got a binomial times a binomial. I got some good old math to do ahead of me here. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. 2h times x is a positive 2hx. 2h times negative 5 is negative 10h. Okay, I'm going to extend my line here because I got a lot more work ahead of me. All right, minus, 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 minus. Now, this second fraction needs the x plus h minus 5 to get the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply it by the x plus h minus 5 on both numerator and denominator. 
but be careful, that's a negative 2x, it's a minus 2x that needs to be distributed. So I get a negative 2x squared, a negative 2xh, and a positive 10x. Again, I had to do a bunch of distribution there. Negative 2x times x, negative 2x times h, negative 2x times negative 5. Be careful, don't just distribute 2x, make sure that minus sign goes with it. Now I'm going to do one more thing here, and I hope this makes sense to you. It's just going to make, it's going to make a lot of reasons why I'm doing this, but first just to make it kind of look nicer. <coughs> Excuse me, instead of dividing everything by h, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of h, 1 over h. That avoids me from having to write a double fraction, and that's the h I'm trying to get to cancel. And if you just give me a moment, it's going to. Positive 2x squared, negative 2x squared, gan. Negative 10x, positive 2x, gan. Positive 10x, excuse me. Positive 2xh, negative 2xh, gone. After all the dust settles, the only thing left in that numerator is a negative 10h. Don't forget about the very ugly denominator now. It's not very pretty, but I'm going to write it out. Again, don't multiply. Just do x plus h minus 5 times x minus 5 times 1 over h. Again, that's the same thing as dividing by h. But here's the moment I've been waiting for. And it actually wasn't that bad. This h and this h are going to cancel. They're going to turn into a 1. h divided by h is 1. So at the end of the day, I get the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 10 all over x plus h minus 5 times x minus 5. All right, now that I got that h to cancel, now I'm going to do direct substitution, plugging in a 0 for my h. This is where I no longer have to write the limit. I get negative 10 over x plus 0 minus 5 times x minus 5. Well, x plus 0 minus 5 is x minus 5, so I get negative 10 over x minus 5 times x minus 5. That's just x minus 5 squared. And yes, you could square that out and get x squared minus 10x plus 25, but just leaving it as x minus 5 squared is totally fine as well. And there it is. There is my final answer. So again, please take the time to process what it is we have done. This is a function. It has a lot of points on it. The only place where there is no point is 5, because that turns the denominator into 0. That's a vertical asymptote. But that's a different lesson. Now, all other points besides 5, there's points, which means there's a slope of a tangent line. If I want to know the slope of that tangent line, I'm going to use this bad boy right here. If I want to know what the slope is at 1, all i got to do is plug 1 into this function down here. That's what I found. I found a formula that can help me find the slope of the tangent line at any given point. Whoa. Listen, we have now arrived at a very crucial point in calculus. The limit used to define the slope of a tangent line is also used to define one of two fundamental operations in calculus, differentiation. Listen, I know it doesn't matter a lot to you at this very moment, but this is a really huge, important word. Differentiation is one of the top two fundamental parts of all of calculus, and what we have just found is differentiation. Finding a formula for the slope of a tangent line at any given point on a function. That process, the process that we just did here, ugh, kind of ugly. The process that we did here, ugh, kind of ugly. The process that we did here, this process is differentiation one of two fundamental operations in calculus. So is this a big deal? Uh, yes, this is a huge deal. Now, this allows us to define what a derivative is. The definition of the derivative of a function is this. Th the, this, this is what we've been doing right here. Now, please note, I'm not giving you two formulas because there's two formulas. I'm just trying to abide by the fact that a lot of really good called textbooks use delta x as the change of x, but again, I'm using h in my formula. h simply represents how I'm changing an x. Whether it's delta x or h, it doesn't really matter. I don't like writing little triangles. I'd rather much write an x. If you like writing little triangles, then you could use delta x, but I like using h. But again, this is a formula to find the slope of a tangent line at any given point. We call this the derivative. The process of finding that 
is called differentiation. It's the process of taking a function and using it to find the slope at any given point on that function. That process is known as differentiation. The result is called the derivative. Now, the derivative is a function, and we denote it with what we call f prime. Prime is this little accent mark right here. So when we put that little accent mark on it right there, we are defining that we have found the derivative, f prime of x. It is a formula to find the slope at any given point on the function. So again, I wanted to put that in words. The derivative is a function of x that finds the slope of the tangent line at any given point on the function. So now we have two things. We have the original function. The original function will help you find y at x. Isn't that what you got? We've been doing that since middle school. That's what functions do. You plug in x, you get y. But now we have learned what a derivative is. f prime of x, a derivative, is a function that doesn't help you find y. It helps you find the slope at x. So we got two functions. One helps you find y. One helps you find the slope at that point. So awesome. The process of finding this new derivative is called differentiation. Again, let's really make sure you understand. Go back to that very first problem we did in this video. We started out with this function, and through my definition, through my good old-fashioned hard work using limits and using algebra, I got the derivative. Now remember, I'm going to put a little accent mark right here. It's not really an accent mark, but it does look like one. But it's called prime, f prime of x. This is the derivative. So, if I say, hey, uh, talk to me about what happens at um, 5. Well, if I plug 5 into my function, I will get the y-coordinate. Okay, that's cool. I've been doing that since 8th grade. But if I plug 5 into my derivative, I get the slope of the tangent line. That is exactly what derivatives do. Differentiation is the calculus operation of getting the derivative. A formula to find the slope at any given point on the function. I hope I've hammered my point home today. I hope it makes a lot of sense. But functions find y, derivatives find slope of tangent lines, and differentiation is the whole process of finding that derivative. And it's not a fun process. It involves some algebra. It involves limits. It involves math. But you've got to embrace it. You've got to love it. You've got to treat yourself as this really cool mathematician that can sit down and just do the work and not cry about it. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully I explained it great to you. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Now you just got to do is try some problems out. Good luck.